And Benedict, why then is this area specifically being targeted and what exactly are the measures then? So northeast England uh, is being targeted because there's been uh, not just across the UK, but particularly in the northeast, a real resurgence of uh, COVID-19 infections. Now, nationally, uh, the death toll is relatively low. It's uh, about 21 uh, people dying uh, per day. The total death toll is uh, huge, 41,705. Uh, but the problem is that although it's not as high as it was at its peak, uh, the number of infections is steadily rising. The R rate, as we know, uh, meaning how many people uh, give it to other people, is rising on a daily basis as well. Uh, so, these restrictions that affect two million people uh, since uh, midnight last night, uh, of course, are going to cause uh, real problems uh, for, for people uh, because they can't socialise with other people. Restaurants and pubs must close uh, at 10 p.m. And we know that in the northeast, particularly, not just here in London, the nighttime economy is very uh, important. So that will cause more economic damage uh, than has already been done. But let's remember there are another 8 million people, so altogether 10 million people, who across the United Kingdom are uh, have these restrictions uh, imposed on them. And there is a real uh, worry here that this could actually go nationwide. There is talk now uh, this morning that the Prime Minister, although he's reluctant uh, to uh, introduce this, that within the next week we might see national, if not lockdown, restrictions, uh, and that is causing great concern. Why has it been caused? Well, particularly because of the return of schools. We knew that was going to happen, it would seem, and also people coming back from holiday. Benedict, uh, as you say there, the number of cases going up, there's also a, a big, big row there, isn't there, about the level of testing and the amount of time it's taking for people to get test results? There is a huge row. There is a huge controversy that has been uh, growing steadily and exponentially, I would say, in the last 48 hours. Now, it has to be said that there are 400 testing centres across the UK. But one of the problems is that, unlike, for example, countries like France, uh, the United Kingdom does not have that many diagnostic testing centres. So this is proving a real uh, challenge. Um, it also is that it's very difficult to get a test. Um, now, according to the health secretary, Matt Hancock, too many people who are, he described as worried well, uh, are going. So, of course, as we enter the autumn winter period, uh, school children and, and others uh, are getting sniffles, are getting colds, possible uh, flu. And once one member of the family uh, gets it, then it seems that lots of people want to, to get it. But there's not just the difficulty of getting a test, it's also the fact that it takes several days for the test uh, to, results to come back. So this, of course, is a real problem. One of the other problems is the limitations uh, of qualified people who can analyse the tests. So mounting problems for the government and a real concern with this resurgence of COVID-19 is that this could continue uh, in the coming days and weeks and that much feared second wave could be upon us shortly. Benedict, thanks very much. Benedict Pavre, our correspondent, uh, speaking to us there from London.